Keeping track of stock across multiple sites can get messy fast, but with the right Excel setup, it doesn't have to be. In this video, I'll show you how to build this inventory management system that tracks your stock, records transactions, generates automatic reorder lists, and gives you instant reports all in one simple workbook. Plus, you can get the free template from the link in the video description. First, I'll give you a quick tour of the template and then we'll step through building it from scratch so you can customize it to your needs. The product sheet is the master list of everything you sell. It includes details like product name, category, unit price, reorder level, and supplier. Think of it as your catalog. In the inventory sheet, you'll see how much stock you currently have on hand broken down by site. If you've got multiple stores, vending machines, or warehouses, this is where you'll track them. The transaction sheet is where every sale and every new stock delivery is recorded. Transactions drive the movement of inventory, so this sheet is the heartbeat of the system. When it's time to restock, the order sheet pulls together a summary of what needs to be ordered, grouped by supplier. It saves you from manually checking every item. And finally, the report sheet is where the analysis happens. You'll find summaries and insights, so you can keep an eye on what's running low. Together, these sheets make a simple but powerful system. Your transactions feed into the inventory, and from there you can generate orders and reports. Okay, let's build it step by step from scratch. The first step in setting up your inventory management system is to create a master list of everything you sell. So in a new file, I have a sheet set up ready to record my products. Now I need a column for each attribute I want to record for my products. Of course, you can customize these to suit your needs. The reorder level is the minimum quantity you want to keep in stock before it triggers a reorder. And this is what drives the order sheet. I'll just pause while I populate the table with my products. You can see each row represents one product and the columns capture all the key details you'll need for managing stock and placing orders. Once you've filled it in this sheet, you've built the foundation for your system. All other sheets, inventory, transactions, orders and reports will rely on these product details. Now to make this data easy to work with, I'll format it in an Excel table and we'll go with this light green color. My table has headers, so I'll click OK. And on the Table Design tab, I'm just going to rename this table Products. And so that I can ensure consistency across the file, I'm going to select the Product ID column. And on the Formulas tab, I'm going to define a name for that column. We'll call it Product List. And I'll be using this name in our Transactions table shortly. You can think of this table as your central catalog. Accurate up-to-date information here means fewer errors everywhere else in the system. The next step is to track every movement of stock. That's where the transactions sheet comes in. Each row here represents a single stock movement, either stock coming in from a supplier or stock going out through sales. By keeping these records up to date, the system can calculate exactly how much inventory you have left at each site. So back in my demo file, I've got a sheet ready to go for transactions. First, we've got transaction ID. This is a unique identifier. It might be a supplier invoice number or your sales invoice number that helps you keep track of the transaction. And we've got date. This is the date the stock movement happened. And this gives you a timeline of activity and makes reporting possible. Then we need product ID. This is unique product code from the product sheet. And this is how the system knows which item is moving. Site is the location where the transaction happened, such as store A, store B, store C. This allows you to track stock across multiple sites. Quantity is how much stock moved. We use positive numbers for receipts, stock coming in, and negative numbers for sales, stock going out. And lastly, type. This is just a short description of the movement. For example, sale, receipt, or opening stock. As before, I'm going to format this as a table in light green, and my table only has headers at the moment, so I'll click OK. This is just going to make it easy to reference and ensure our reports automatically update. We'll rename this table Transactions. And to ensure consistency for the product ID, I'm going to insert a data validation list on the Data tab, Data Validation. Here we want List, and the source is the defined name I created earlier. So I'm going to press F3 to bring up the list. There's my name, click OK and OK. And this will ensure only products that exist in our product sheet are entered here, resulting in accurate data. I'm going to pause while I enter some data. You can see I've entered my opening stock and then sales are entered as negative quantities and receipts are entered as positive quantities. This sheet becomes your audit trail. 
if you ever wonder why your stock level looks a certain way, you can come here and trace every movement of that product. With our products defined and our transactions recorded, the next step is to see what we actually have on hand right now, and that's the job of the inventory sheet. This sheet pulls together all the transactions and summarizes the current stock at each site. In other words, it answers the question, how much do I have left and where is it? Okay. Let's set up the inventory sheet. And in the interest of time, I'm just going to paste in the column headers. Site is the location where the stock's held, such as store A, store B, or store C. And then for every store, we should have all product IDs represented. So I'll pause while I add the rest. And before we get ahead of ourselves, let's format this as a table. And I'm just going to use this light gray. My table has headers. Click OK. And this is our inventory. And then product description, supplier, cost per unit and reorder level link directly back to the product sheet using an XLOOKUP formula or for earlier versions of Excel you can use VLOOKUP. What am I looking up? The product ID. Where am I looking it up? In my products table and I want to return the product name. If that product is not found we'll just return the text not found. Close parentheses on XLOOKUP and it copies down the column. Now I'm going to control C and then control V to paste the formula across. And then all I need to do is edit the return array. So instead of product name here, we want supplier tab to insert it. And then for this one, we want cost per unit tab to insert it. And then for this one, we want reorder level. Quantity on hand is the live stock level calculated as opening stock plus receipts minus sales. And we can do this with some ifs. What we want to do is go to the transactions table and aggregate the quantities. The next argument is the criteria range. Well, that's where the product ID here matches back in our inventory, the product ID here. The next criteria range is back in the transactions where the site matches back in the inventory, the site here. Close parentheses and press enter. Because this quantity on hand is calculation driven, you don't need to update it manually. As soon as you add new sales or receipts in your transactions table, it's going to update the inventory sheet automatically. Next, the stock value is simply the cost per unit times the quantity on hand. And then for the reorder column, this is simply a yes or no. Do we need to order it or not? So we can use an if formula to check if the quantity on hand is less than or equal to the reorder level, then yes, we want to reorder. Otherwise, no. Close parentheses on if. And now we can see here, LED fidget spinners for store C need reordering. We can also use the filter buttons to show the items that need reordering and see which stores are running low. Think of this sheet as your single source of truth. Whenever you need to know how much stock is available at a particular site, this is where you'll look. As you've seen so far, we're pulling together a range of Excel skills to build a complete inventory system. And that's exactly what my Excel expert course gives you. The fundamentals and insider tricks you need so you can pull them together to build solutions that save hours. You'll get step-by-step -step lessons, real world examples, plus support and mentoring from me personally. The link's in the video description. Okay, now that we know how much stock we have on hand, the next question is, when do we need to reorder and from whom? That's where the order sheet comes in. This sheet uses a pivot table to pull together all the products that have dropped below their reorder levels. And it summarizes them by supplier, product and store, giving you a ready-made reorder list in just a few clicks. So going back to our inventory sheet, let's assume I'm going to order all these items. I'm going to select all the cells in the order date column and then enter today's date with control semicolon. You can see it up there in the formula bar and then control enter to enter it in all of the cells. And then from this table, I'm going to summarize it with the pivot table. I'm going to put it on an existing location because I've got a sheet here ready for my orders and click OK. Let's left click and drag the pivot table field list over closer. Here I want the site across the columns. I want the supplier in the rows the product ID and product description. In the values, I need the reorder level summarized. And in the filters, I want reorder and order date. All right, we can dock that back over there. 
Let's go up to the design tab and we'll just make this a gray style here. I'm going to add subtotals at the bottom of the group and let's insert a blank row after each item just to give it a bit more space. Now I don't want to subtotal each of the products. We don't need that as well. Just subtotals at the supplier level. All right. All we need to see here are items that need reordering. So we want to filter for yes and the order date. Well, I just want to pick up those that need ordering today and I'll insert a slicer for the supplier. Click OK. Let's pop it over there and we'll make it gray in keeping with my theme. And now I can filter based on a specific supplier or select multiple as required. The result is a ready made purchase order list. Instead of digging through rows of data, you've got a clean supplier focus summary that tells you what do I need, where do I need it, and who do I order it from. And the best part, because it's a pivot table, it updates automatically with the click of the refresh all button. Or if you have Microsoft 365, you can set the pivot table to auto refresh. All right, let's step through the process of recording new sales or receipts in the transaction sheet and we'll see how the order sheet automatically reflects those changes. No extra work required. I've got some sales and stock receipt transactions here. I'm going to control C to copy them and on my transactions table, go to the very bottom and on the next empty row, I'm just going to paste them in. Notice the table has expanded to include these new transactions and this automatically flows through to my inventory sheet. First, let's check which orders have come in. So I want to change the reorder level to show no. And under order date, date filters, I want dates after, and I'll just put in the 1st of January, 2025, which will capture any date entered in this column. So we can see we've received these five orders. And because I want to view this filter data often, I'm going to go to the view tab. I'm going to create a new view. We'll call this goods received. You can see I'm now in the view called goods received. And I don't need these order dates anymore because they no longer require ordering. So I'll delete them. I'm going to exit this view and then on the data tab, I'm going to clear the filters and then we'll go back to the view tab and we'll create a new view and we'll call this all data. This will enable me to toggle between all data and the goods received. Obviously we've got no goods received anymore because we just deleted those dates. Let's go back to all data. Now there is another view we need and that's the products we need to order. So I'm going to exit this view and then apply the filters for the goods we need to order. So where the reorder level says yes, and the order date is blank. We'll set up a new view, which we'll call reorder. So now I can toggle between all data, goods received and reorder. We've got one more item that needs ordering. So I'll enter a new date. I'll just put in tomorrow's date and then in the order report, I simply change the order date here to show tomorrow's orders. Click OK. And there's my order summary for Paperworks supplies. OK, we've seen how transactions flow into the order sheet to generate supplier lists. Now let's take it one step further and create pivot table reports that summarize our stock on hand, both units and in value across stores. From the inventory table, we're going to insert a pivot table report. I've got a sheet already set up called reports and we'll pop it on there. Click OK. Let's drag the field list over. The first report is going to summarize the stock on hand. and We want to see it by sight across the columns and then we want product description and product ID. And you can see this pivot table is set to auto refresh by default. Let's change the design to go with this gray scale and I'll simply copy this pivot table and paste it in here. And then instead of quantity on hand, I'm going to summarize the stock value. So that's my pivot tables done. Let's make this data a little bit easier to make sense of with some conditional formatting color scales. And I just want to highlight them in green, yellow, red. So red is low stock and green is at the high end. And there we have a powerful snapshot of the health of our inventory. Now, one last thing we can do is back on the inventory sheet. At the top here, we can add some headline figures to summarize our total stock value. And to pick up that figure, we're just going to sum the stock value column here. Let's format that in a currency and we'll just apply a little bit of formatting to make this stand out a bit more. Let's give it a light gray fill 
and I'm just going to do control one to open the format cells dialog box and on the border tab I'm going to add a thick left border here and we'll make this font bold and let's just bump it across to the right slightly and we'll center this so it's a bit closer okay and there we have our inventory management system our products contains the master list of everything we sell the transactions keep track of what comes in and goes out the inventory sheet gives us our overview of stock on hand our order sheet automatically generates the orders for our suppliers and our reports give us the snapshot of our inventory now that you've got your stock under control in my next video i'll show you how to take excel even further and use it as a database with a custom user form you'll see how to capture data through a simple form and automatically save it into a structured searchable database Perfect for clients, projects, inventory, and more. I'll see you there.